Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and after years of staring at Jazzware's use of the Mortal Kombat license, watching it turned into a prolonged fall down a staircase, I was overjoyed to see the franchise finally move its action figure activity elsewhere. Mezco has released their opening wave of Mortal Kombat X characters, and I'm going to start reviewing them by cracking open Ed Boon's Golden Boy, Scorpion, the undead but not undead and now has facial hair, Ninja Man, who just wants you to get over here, darn it. Mezco's MKX line is clocking in at the 6 inch scale, and Scorpion's got a properly detailed sculpt filling out his 15 centimeters of plastic height. It looks great! There are a couple of different surface textures, all of his copious Hell Ninja buckles and straps are present and accounted for, and his face mask is full of dynamic curvature and armor-plated cheek venting. The paintwork gets really detail-oriented and looks pretty darn badass, especially given that these guys retail for around 20 US dollars and can be found for a little less than that if you shop around. No major piece of sculpting goes unpainted and most all of the smaller bits are even picked out. I've unfortunately got a pretty bad blemish on one of the shoulder buckles, but otherwise my scorpion looks good. You can always eyeball this guy in his packaging if you're buying them in person. Aside from all the straps and buckles, I've got to give particular paintwork kudos to Scorpion's eyes, which are not only dotted in white, but also very thinly outlined in black. This makes them burst to life from beneath his hood. Scorpion's packaged with a pair of semi-grippy, semi-fisty hands installed. These are primarily meant to hold his pair of big-ass, kinda sorta katanas, which are sizable sword accessories. They haven't got quite as much paint detail, but all the major blocks are color separated. You can also store these on Scorpion's back in a way that was not entirely intuitive to me until I saw some pictures. Hopefully this doesn't cause paint wear on the blades over time. There's a second pair of hands included, which are more open and splayed. While you're switching one, you can also push the connector peg through one of the two included chain spear accessories. This is a bit harder to do than I'd have liked, but the final effect looks legit. The chain is coming seamlessly out of Scorpion's sleeve, and doesn't interfere with the posability at all. You can also have him hold on to one if you want it to look like it's dangling down and preparing to fatalitize. It's kinda loose in there, but if you balance things right and, you know, don't touch him, it looks okay. By the way, the hand swap plastic tolerances feel wonderful on all three of my Wave 1 MKX dudes. I'd recommend working all the wrist joints before swapping stuff, just in case, but I'm so happy that this function doesn't feel fragile in the least. So before I go straight into the joints on this guy, let's talk about two concepts. One's Global, one's Scorpion. Uh, these guys have got layered soft PVC parts over joints for the sake of their look and their costume. Like his hood is a, is a layered piece of soft PVC over his head sculpt. This thing is layered PVC over his hips. It's all cool. In Scorpion's case, when you're moving his head around on its ball joint, which is all nice and got a, you know, it's got a big waggle range, a big nodding range. As you're playing with Scorpion, you're eventually going to bump his face mask and you're going to realize it comes off. And he's got this fairly attractive, clean-shaven face underneath that looks nothing like he does in the game. And the face mask attaches mostly by gripping onto his nose. It grips on fine, but it gets bumped off pretty easy. It's not going to fall off super easy, at least not on mine. But as you see, the friction of my thumb sucked it off his face. Uh, often I'm messing around with him, posing him and stuff, and then, you know, hit him there and... Oh, comes loose, and now he looks silly. I get what they were going for, but in MKX, Scorpion has got a sadness beard. This one doesn't. Probably could have just glued that thing on. Uh, maybe this is just a case of a face sculpt existing, like maybe this is going to be for somebody else. He's got, like, ears back there, too. So perhaps this is some clever, you know, shared tooling going on. I don't know, but be aware of that when you get this guy. You're going to notice right away when you pull him out of the package, he's got, like, a clamshell over his face preventing that from falling off and shipping. Let's talk about posability, though. There's that ball-jointed neck. Uh, there are also pin-disc shoulders, and on Scorpion, he can get his shoulders up pretty far, considering he's got all this stuff going on up here. And uh, they can also go forwards and backwards pretty decently, out to there and out to there, all the way up. Yay! He's got a hinged elbow that bends this far. It's like just shy of 90 degrees, uh, and it is a single hinge elbow. There is also a bicep swivel, because it pegs up in there. I would have loved a double jointed elbow, but these guys' price point. Hey, get back on his face. These guys' price point of like around uh, or just under 20 US, uh, if you, you know, find the best deal. That extra parts count, I think, would have driven things up. More on that, you know, at the end. But his wrist joints uh, are a swivel peg in kind of hingy deal. And here's, here's the thing so these are his grippy hands, right? 
His open hands and his grippy hands, they both bend on this axis. And that's fine, but dang, do I wish I could have had his grippy hands bend this way so he could point swords forwards. Oh well, I'll live. He's got a ball joint in his waist, but it primarily just lets him turn his waist left and right. As you can see, there's like a tiny bit of wiggle, but it's so small I would call it inconsequential. It helps when you're twisting him to, you know, kind of right him a little bit, but it's by no means uh, a substitute for a mid-torso joint uh, in any way, shape, or form. Sculpt does not play like that, and I don't really want it to have. Uh, I think it's fine. Um, it's survivable. He's got ball socket hips, and they can come out about that far, so you can't quite do the splits. I hope if they do Johnny Cage, you know, this is solved. Uh, they can come forwards pretty decently, uh, because of the layered soft PVC, nothing outright hinders things. They can go backwards pretty decently too, but if you pull them back or forwards a bit too far, they also pop off, uh, without, uh, too much risk. Like, it's not easy to pop them off, and they go back on pretty solid, but if you're customizing or something, they're not a nightmare to get off of there. There's also a thigh swivel, uh, right there by the ball socket joint. Single jointed knee works just like the elbow and due to the sculpting it does not go a full 90 and that's a bit of a shame uh, The elbows and knees are pretty much the weakness as far as these guys posing uh, Ability is concerned, but because it's like the elbow There's also a swivel down here so you can actually have the thigh independently swivel all by itself if you want to be weird Finally, there's a ball socket connected ankle but it's like the ankle is, has eaten the ball, and the socket in the foot has devoured it. So, uh, talking about range, and talking about focus, the uh, left and right tilt range is about, like, here to there. Forward and backward, tip and toe and tap your foot range is about this. It's not the deepest ankle joint, but it is helpful. So, you can get this guy to... You know, be flat stance when he's got his legs wide apart, and that's all I really want. Uh, the last thing about the posability that I uh, actually quite enjoy is that the ball socket hips have got cuts in them such that the legs are not locked, you know, like, this is not their stock position, and that's that. You can also get them together really close. I hope this goes on through the entirety of this Mezco MKX line, because this does a whole lot to make up for the deficiencies of the elbows and knees. Uh, I would love for the elbows and knees to have tighter curls, but I wouldn't want the price point on these guys to go up, and I like the accessory counts, so I'm at an impasse. They are decently poseable. Uh, for what they cost, I think they're fine. Uh, if you need more posability, I'm not gonna tell you to just, like, suck it up and deal with this, because... Yeah, there's more that could be going on here, especially for martial artist figures. But, uh, I feel it's very price point suitable. There's easy room for improvement on Scorpion, mostly in the departments of double jointing his elbows and knees and just gluing the mask onto his face because the sensible experiment of having it come off just ain't working. However, given the top marks tier sculpt and respectably detailed levels of paintwork, alongside a nicely meaty accessory count and survivable posability, I think Mezco have created a real solid roundabouts $20 package. At this price point, I think the figure's a real swell bang for my buck, especially with how sturdy the overall construction feels for this kind of product. The increased posability I'd like to have seen probably would have pushed this line up to a $25 to $30 cost per figure, and man, I don't know if it'd have quite the same delightful ratio of features for my money. Fighting game characters need posability, but Mortal Kombat X's style of martial arts lends itself to the available articulation pretty decently. You know, with their intros and the part where they kind of do all that crazy fake martial arts stuff before they pull their opponent's heads off and throw them at each other. If you do need more posability in your capital K combatant toys, push Mezco to get going on some 112 collective Mortal Kombat releases. In my opinion, the MKX line appears to be well worth the cost, given its cost. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and Scorpion here is also my middle ranker in Mezco's first wave. Who came above and below? Stay tuned, mister! Cause things are gonna get toasty. Yeah, that was hilarious!